Welcome to Tune of the Month and happy July! This month I'm going to share with you a fabulous tune out of the Slip Jig family. This is technically a slide, which you can think of as a faster, bouncier slip jig. Shortest version of that story, but it'll do. I had requests from several of you guys to teach this one. It's called The Slide from Grace by the Irish piper and composer John McSherry. Um, I first heard this tune played by the band Can on their absolutely transcendent album Sleeper that has dominated my life for many years. And um, it's awesome. What can I say? You have excellent taste in tunes. Those of you who requested this, the slide from Grace. Oh, one, two, three. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by. And if you're ready to learn it, let's dive in. All right, so if you've been a longtime follower of Tune of the Month, you know that in the summer, we tend to do these short tunes um, that are really easy to pick up by ear because all of you are going to fiddle camp and we're trying to learn tunes camp style where you gotta grab them quickly and just get them going through lots and lots of repetition. So we're gonna break this one down relatively minimally. I'm gonna ask you to really sound it out, listening for patterns, and uh, put it together as quick as you can. It's a great tune for that because it's very repetitive, and the things that repeat are really fantastic little melodic lines. All right? So, uh, slip jig family means that we're in nine, eight. You're gonna fill this in three. A one, a two, a three. A one, and a two, and a three. And a one, and a two, and a three. And um, if you ever need to find that feel, you can just follow what Liz Carroll told me when I was a kid. Um, when it is a 9-8 slip jig, just say to yourself, by the band of beer, by the band of beer, and you'll have the feel. And actually that by the band of beer is even more a slide feel than a slip jig feel, right? Um, because it has that bum ba dum ba dum that bouncier rhythm, the quarters and eighth notes, rather than groups of three running eighth notes like we would have in a jig. Okay. Shoo. This tune is uh, two sharps and it's kind of playing with that line between B minor, a little darker in the A section, and D major, a little brighter in the B section. That relative major minor feel makes it um, really spectacular. I love tunes that do this, that play with the relative majors and minors. Okay, I'm going to play the A section a little bit slowly. I'm going to take the ornaments out for right now so you can just start grabbing that melody. See how much it can sound out. No pickups right on the downbeat. One, a two, a three. Part one. Part two. Back to part one. Ending. And that's it. That's two A's. It goes by so fast, doesn't it? So notice I was calling out the parts. There's a part one, a part two, a part one comes back, and then there's an ending. Listen again. Part one. One, a two, a three. Part two. Part one. Ending. Repeat part one. Part two. Back to part one. Ending. Yeah, are you already starting to pick it, pick that out? You can always sing it. You can pause the video, noodle around a little bit. All right, so let's break it down a little bit more, not too much, because it will stop making sense. Part one goes like this. Now, I said I keep the ornaments up, but actually an ornament really helps here because you have there's a little repeated note. Now, in Irish music, it is absolutely stylistic 
to add a little tap grace note in between those two repeated notes, right? Here's a re two repeated notes, they're there. And to add a little tap of the finger in between them helps with the rhythm and it gives it more ornamented feel. Now you can tap with any finger you like. I personally like my third finger, but you should try a whole bunch and um, see what's good with you. Also tap, you could also know that, uh, maybe know that ornament as a flap or the Irish call it a flick sometimes. Um, I like calling it a tap because that's what your finger actually does. It taps the string and gets away. Tap. Up the scale. Good, let's look at it again. And tap. Good. Now look at the bowing pattern here because this is going to govern basically the rest of the tune. Slip jigs being in 98 means that um, we're always going to kind of end up backwards the next bar and tune the month we work a lot of getting down bow for down beats which we want to keep doing when a tune is in three right this is a big three no one and a two and a three and a um, we're going to need to add an extra slur somewhere so that way the next bar doesn't naturally come out up bow i think you all probably know about this and the bowing pattern there are lots of ways you could do that but the bowing pattern that i like to use in this tune uses what I call a bounce slur. We've seen it in past tune of the month slip jigs. Here it is. Down, up, down. That's the bounce slur. Happens on that little up the scale. Right at the end of the measure. Now I call it a bounce slur because you're bouncing off the down bow. Bounce. And that little slurred up bow, two notes up bow, is like the rebound off the down bow. Does that make sense? Do it with me, part one. Tap. Bounce. Slur. Land. Again. Bounce. Slur. Go one more time. Bounce. Slur. Good. And where you just landed, that's part two. Listen to part two. Almost identical. Part two. Now this one we don't need the bounce slur for because that's a quarter note we just landed on that A. Now we're going back to part one, little pickup. Did you catch it with the bounce slur? Good, and here's the ending. Notice it's the same kind of pattern. Tap down the scale. Ending one more time. There you go, and that's the whole A section. It's so short. It's actually a single tune, a single slide. Nomenclature gets a little weird with these slides, I gotta say. But it's short and it's easy. And notice that we are already baking in ornaments and bowings that are actually not designed to make the tune fancier. They're make, designed to make it work better at tempo. Let's put the whole A section together. We'll do two of them, of course. Ready? Part one. One, a two, a three, and tap. Bounce slur. Part two. Tap. Yang. And part one. Bounce slur. Bounce slip or land. That's a really important feel, and you'll use it in um, many, many slip jigs besides just this one. Okay, if you would like some more repetition on that A section, be my guest, rewind the video, and I'll practice with you as many times as you like. It's the magic of YouTube. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go on to the B section. All right, I'll play it slowly, see if you can recognize any patterns from the A. Here it is.
and then it goes back to the A. <laughs> nice, okay, so this B section is built double, it's double the length of the A, so it's gonna feel like you're playing one B. This is common in single tunes, we've seen it in past two of the months, where it will feel like you're playing two A's B, two A's B. That's because the B section is written to be twice as long as the A. But it still follows part one, part two, part one again, ending. Here's part two, uh, sorry, part one, where you would logically start. Part one. You see the bounce slurs? Try it again. Bounce slur. Bounce slur. Yeah, it always comes at the end of the measure, right? Sound that melody out. Okay, so remember this is the part that's kind of gone D major, right? And we really have up the scale. That's a scalar part in that first half there. Now the second half is going to be all D major arpeggio. Try that second half, D major arpeggio starting on the A. Yeah, try the arpeggio part again. Good. So that's the theme, part one of the B section, little scale part and little arpeggio part, both D major, D major, D major. Let's do it whole part one. Good, try it again. Good, here comes part two. Starts the same way as part one. at the end, of course. One more time. Very good. Now we're back to part one again. Woohoo! Arpeggio part. Now check out this arpeggio. Ooh, so this is technically a part one prime is what I call it. When part one comes back the same, but the ending changes just a tiny bit because we're getting ready to go back to the A section, which means we need to leave the happy sunny land of D major and get back to the darker, more mysterious land of B minor. So listen where this comes. Here's my part one again. Right here, instead of D major, we go B minor. Ooh, it's so good. Such clever writing. Try it again, part one prime. Get ready. B minor. Yeah, try it again. And then we need the ending, the coolest part of the whole tune, I think. It's just so unusual, the rhythm. <laughs> I'll play it again. So you just kind of have to sing it. I wouldn't think too much about exactly what the rhythm's doing. It's a neighbor tone land, and up it goes. Neighbor tone land. And up it goes on. So notice what I do with the bowing here. 
I'm gonna do a little scoot slur. So after those little breaths, each one, in the breath, I'm gonna let my bow kind of hang in the air. It's a little bit like hang time, like if you're on the top of a roller coaster, right? And the cart goes down and your stomach just stays a foot above your head for a split second. I call it a hang time lift. Hang time. And always when I come down off that hang time, I'm gonna slur the next two down bow, like a leaning pickup that we've done in past tunes of the months, right? Hang down. Down. Now do that ending one more time. Hang time. Hang time. There you go, and that's the whole B section. Are you ready to put it all together? Really think those parts, part one, part two, part one again, ending. Starts up high. twice through the tune. Now as we go, I'll keep the first time through pretty clean. I'm just going to put in the structural ornaments that we've already been talking about, those little taps on the repeated notes. Um, the second time through, I'm going to start to put in a couple extra ornaments. Now if you're newer to ornamentation, check out some past tunes of the month, particularly Irish jigs, where we've looked all at rolls and hammer-ons and pull-offs and taps and the whole what have you, all those different ornaments that you can use to beautify this. Um, or you can just kind of listen and pick up matches close to what I'm doing by ear or just match what feels good to you. All of us have our ornaments that we feel um, most connected to and our fingers like the most. The places to put them here and in any slide or any jig um, is anytime you have a long note. Long notes are always the opportunity to ornament, right? Because we have time. And especially in slides, you have quite a few of them. So anything you want to put in to make it even more flowery and Irishy and pipey, like Mr. McSherry himself would do, be my guest. Here we go. One, two, three. Part one. Part two. Part one again. Ending.
the D. I'm never sure which I like best, and often I'm using this tune to go into another slide, so I don't actually have to make the decision. But it's going to be all up to you as you take this tune and make it a part of your repertoire, and hopefully use these skills that we've been working on here, that little bounce slur, to give it that nice, like, slidey feel, and um, the structural ornaments, plus putting in the playful ones that I'm sure you did that last time through. Um, it becomes more and more a part of how you just play these tunes. So the slide from Grace is a wonderful excuse to play with those ideas, but I hope you're going to take them to your other tunes and apply them there as well. So you get more and more um, style and flair in your playing across the board. All right. Well, you guys, this has been fun. I hope you have also had a blast. If you would like to see sheet music for this and all future tunes of the month, make sure as always that you're subscribed to my email newsletter, www.mariblack.com is my website. And there you can sign up to stay in touch by email. And each month when I send out my email newsletter, I include my own handwritten version of the current tune of the month, a little gift for those of you who stay in touch regularly. And should it be helpful for you? But hopefully you don't need those dots. Hopefully you're just listening and sounding it out and picking it up fiddle camp style. All right, look forward to seeing you next month. Enjoy your camps, your tunes, and we'll have more back here very soon. See you guys.